Travel International, creating life-changing experiences and unique opportunities to meet the world together. My name is Tammy, and I'm the president of Fun and Adventure here at Singles Travel International for 21 years. And we started doing the webinars because we get a lot of questions from our members before they go. And quite honestly, planning a vacation isn't as easy as it used to be. You're probably wondering, what do I do next? What's this about store excursions, specialty dining? Um, how do I get from the airport to the hotel? And so on and so forth. Some of our members are very interested in all the details from the very beginning. Others are just ready to show up and have a good time no matter what your style, though. Tonight, we're here to answer all your questions. And I'm sharing the stage today with Paul Lofren. He is um, with Celebrity Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean Azamara. And Paul is the manager of global product development on the um, team for shore excursions at Royal Celebrity and Azamara. He specializes in, in Asia and the South Pacific, and that's why he's been chosen to present New Zealand to us tonight. Hello, Paul. How are you? Hi, everyone. How are you doing? You hear me okay? I hope all's well. Good. Thank you, Tammy. Great. I also have Heidi here, who is one of our premier STI co-peers, and she's going to be on the New Zealand Australia cruise with you all. And she's looking forward to talking to you at the end of tonight's presentation. So stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and let Paul get started. I hope everybody's able to see uh, Paul's screen with the STI logo and the celebrity logo. Um, you know what, before we get started, if everybody could just um, let us know if you can see the screen. There's a uh, chat box at the bottom, and there's also a question and answer section. And uh, at any time, you're able to ask questions, and we are going to open up for some Q&A when we finish with Paul. So I see some hellos there. Okay, terrific. That's great. Okay, Paul, it's all yours. Perfect. Thank you, Tammy. Well, good evening, everyone. Once again, let you say my name is Tammy. So my name is Paul Lochran with uh, Royal Caribbean Celebrity Nazamara. And I've been with Royal Caribbean since 1992, so about 23 or so years. Started on board ships as a dive instructor and a dive manager. And uh, I've been working in the shore excursions department since uh, about 2007. So I worked on ships all the way up to 07 and came into the office. And I'm the account manager for the product development in the exotics region of the world. So that's Asia, Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific, Pacific Northwest, Hawaii, Alaska, Dubai, and the Middle East. So I can't complain at all. I love what I do. I like to travel. It's been an absolute pleasure moving around the world for Royal Caribbean Celebrity and Azamara and um, working with tour operators to bring some of the um, adventurous, amazing sightseeing type tours out to the market and to you, our guests, uh, and specifically uh, welcome the Singles Travel International with ce Celebrity Cruises on the Celebrity Solstice on uh, November 14th uh, of this year. So we welcome you. And so I'm going to go over a number of the tours, just port by port, just pretty much the top two, top three tours in each port. And just tell me if I'm not going too fast or going slow or everything's okay on your end. Um, if everything is okay. Uh, Tammy, everything okay so far? If I can just proceed ahead, yep. are you okay with everything? Good? Yeah, it sure looks great from here. I love our logo. You probably nice, love very yours. good. Well, starting off in um, the very first port of call in, in the Bay of Islands is, um, is the very first one. And just experiencing a problem with my screen. So there we go. So the, in the Bay of Islands, we have three tours. The, the top tours that we're recommending. Historic Hokianga, it's a seven hour, 30 minute tour, a full day tour over to the Hokianga region. So basically the ship pulls into the Bay of Islands. It's a tender port. So the tenders will take you over to a place called um, Waitangi Pier. And from there, your, ten, uh, your bus will take you all the way over to um, Hokianga. It's approximately a, a two hour a bus ride, scenic ride over to Hokianga and where you experience a full day in that region. Cruise through the Hokianga Harbor, um, later on explore the Waipua Forest and uh, home of the largest cowrie tree. These are like 3,000 year old. They're large, amazing 
um, trees in this region, the cowrie, only mainly known to the New Zealand region. And then enjoy a delicious lunch at a um, at the Opanoni Hotel featuring Hokianga pork sausages and grilled North Northland sirloin steak. So enjoy a delicious lunch, um, Kiwi style, in that particular region. That's the historic Hokianga full day tour. Next tour, one of the, a real highlight is the glow worms and Kauri forest. Um, a half day tour, four hours to the Pukukiti State uh, Forest. Again, visiting and viewing the giant kauri trees. Absolutely stunning scenery. Um, again, these, these very old trees, 3,000 plus years old. And, and then you'll make your way to the glowworm cave. Now, this is a strenuous tour. What makes this strenuous is just some stairs that go up and into the cave and getting maneuvering in and around this cave. So um, not, not that overly strenuous getting in and around the area. It's just getting into the cave by those stairs. The next tour is the Zane Gray's Hole in the Rock Cruise, a spectacular coastal cruise that takes you to this interesting rock formation as you actually see a hole in the rock, hence the name of the tour and the cruise. And so you'll cruise this rugged landscape um, down the coastline of the Bay of Islands. Absolutely picturesque and stunning. And you'll navigate through the hole in the rock. Um, you'll view the, and photo stop of the Grand Cathedral in this particular, and some of these images of, of is this area of the Grand Cathedral. And then while you're on the cruise, you'll, you'll, it's a morning tour, so you'll sip some morning tea while taking in the view. Again, this is a four-hour tour. Moving on to Tauranga, the next port of call. This is, you'll be docking in this port of call. And you'll journey. This one's the intimate Rotorua and thermal experience. It's a complete nine-hour full-day tour when you're in port. You'll journey from Tauranga, the small town where the ship docks, and then you'll go north to uh, Rotorua, which is a geothermal, bubbling mud, um, uh, region where there's all kinds of uh, like steam and um, hot pools, geothermal pools in this area. So you'll visit the Waiotapu, um, land of the Maori they call the sacred waters, and visit like bubbling pools, mineral terraces, and steaming volcanic lakes in that area. You'll board a riverboat and take a relaxing um, cruise and enjoy a, a lunch along, along the Lake Rotorua. Before heading back, you'll hit, you'll hit the Kiwi House to see the New Zealand's national bird, the flightless bird, the kiwi, in its darkened habitat. It's nocturnal, so it's going to be a, it's in a darker, kind of a dimly lit, um, nice area habitat where you'll see and you'll get a chance to see the kiwi uh, again, flightless, can't fly. So she's uh, a number of these birds will be just in there just at night. So you may see a few of them moving around. That's a full day, nine hour tour. That's the intimate Rotorua and thermal experience in Tauranga. Moving on to the next tour, Thermal Lake Jet Boat and Hell's Gate. Again, heading up and journeying to the Rotorua region, which is a geothermal area. Surround yourself in steaming geothermal springs as you cruise around Lake Rotorua in an exciting jet boat. Um, this one's a lot of fun. And then visit Hell's Gate features the raw power and the, while exploring the mud pools and the geysers in this region again um, and seeing the, the, the largest thermal waterfall in the southern hemisphere, the Kahi, um, Kakahi Falls. Sorry. And then, uh, then visit and then discover the legends of the region, the Hell's Gate area. Again, a, this is a six-hour tour, so it doesn't include lunch, so you head back to the ship. Next tour and next port of call is Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. You will be docked in Wellington at this particular port. There's a few tours here. We got the Seal Coast uh, Safari four-wheel drive tour. Climb aboard a four-wheel drive, explore, and travel through the rugged hills and beautiful valleys of the south coast. See New Zealand's famous Leaning Lighthouse. You'll see a picture of that in, in the, one of the pictures I have there. And then you'll meet a colony of our friendly fur seals along the coast. And then break for a nice warm uh, hot muffin if, and, and a nice coffee along the way. This is a half day, just a short 3.5 hour tour. 
Uh, fantastic experience. This is one of my favorite trips in um, in Wellington. Next tour, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, follow the trilogy, and even if you're into the Hobbiton now, and and um, absolutely the, visiting the Weta Cave in South Coast. So the Weta Cave, the photo that you're seeing here, um, is actually a museum. It's a very small local museum which you will visit and get a chance to buy a Lord of the Rings souvenir or pick up a nice um, item from, from, the, from the different uh, movies and from the producers of the movie and stuff. You'll, visit the, you'll tour the panoramic Wellington region and, and in the harbor as well. And you'll visit some of the film locations used in creating Lord of the Rings in the film, film trilogy. And then you'll also tour the south coast on your return. So if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, definitely this tour is for you. 3.5 hours, only a half-day tour as well. Moving on to Akaroa. This is the port that's just outside of Christchurch. You may remember Christchurch was in the news a few years back from the earthquake down in New Zealand. And um, so Akaroa is, is over the hills and in an area which is a nice little town where the ship will anchor, and so it'll be another tender port into Akaroa. One of the highlights in, in Akaroa, and you'll make your way through and to Christchurch, is the Transalpine Express Railway. The scenery is, is, is fantastic on this, and, and it's just stunning to see the amazing scenery on, on throughout the, the lands, and some of the, you'll see some of, again, more of the, the areas of, of Lord of the Rings where things were filmed, where the scenery uh, where was, was shot. Absolutely stunning. Um, it's one of the world's greatest train rides, and, and it'll take you through the majestic Southern Alps uh, for, again, more uh, views and of the ravines and rainforests along the way. Enjoy morning, tree, uh, sorry, morning tea, and you'll have a, um, as you pass through valleys and gorges and beneath southern peaks, you'll stop at a, at a, um, at a farm location, it's an, it's a nice, it's an area called Homebush. We'll have a very local um, type New Zealand Kiwi type lunch. Absolutely fantastic. We have a marquee right next to this really nice picturesque uh, uh, farmhouse. And there'll be a sheep shearing show where the dogs round up the sheep. A lot of fun. And that's something you'll see a lot of sheep in New Zealand on this particular tour. So this is a full day, nine hour excursion on the Transalpine Express Railway. The next tour in Akaroa, which is staying in the Akaroa area, not heading over to Christchurch and over the mountains, you'll see the stunning scenery with, with the Fox 2 uh, vintage sailing catch in this particular tour. In the foreground, you'll see the, the, the dolphins that you'll get a chance to see and maybe even some sea lions, some sea life, sea lions, and maybe even penguins along the way. Keep your eyes open for the different types of birds and the scenery. A nice relaxing sail on the Fox 2. I think there's some cheeses and some, 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 some nice drinks as well on this one. This is a 2.5 hour tour that leaves right from where you will tender from the solstice right into the tender pier in uh, Akaroa and then board the, the Fox 2 sailing catch right there and go for a 2.5 hour tour. That's in Akaroa. Moving on to Dunedin. Dunedin City Tour and Tyree Gorge, a combination tour, another train tour. Um, this one travels along the rugged countryside of New Zealand's Tyree Gorge in a different style, more of a vintage rail car. Enjoy a light lunch along the way on the train as you'll enjoy the different terraces, the bridges that you go through, numerous tunnels. Again, the scenery, really, really nice. And this is a guy, and then when you return back to Dunedin through the through the capital, uh, sorry, the, the town and then the railroad center, you'll visit, um, you'll get a guided tour, uh, coach tour through the city of Dunedin and including the Otago, Otago Museum, that's the region. This is a 7.5 hour tour which includes lunch which will be provided on the train. Next tour. This one's really the highlight if you would like to experience New Zealand and the South Island completely in its entirety before heading back to Australia. And this one's the Dunedin, Milford Sound, the Queenstown Overnight, which is two days, one evening, which will be spent in Queenstown, uh, New Zealand. The adventure capital, right on a beautiful waterway where you'll take a vintage paddle steamer and take it out to a place called 
uh, the Walter Peak Country Sheep Station for a delicious dinner, a sheep shearing show. There'll be dogs there rounding up the sheep, and that'll be the evening on your first run. So that's a full, includes lunch, dinner, and breakfast throughout those two days. And then you'll stay one night in a hotel in Queenstown. There's a little bit of free time on this one. So if you're a really, really adventurous, adventurous it's not part of the tour, but it, um, if you are adventurous, you, this is where bungee jumping started. This is where it all started in 1983, home of the bungee on the Kawarawa Suspension Bridge. The, the tour visits there, but also while you're staying in, in, in Queenstown, you have some free time. It's something optional that if you wanted to do, that's something that you can do on your own. It's not part of the tour. So if you're really adventurous, check out that. Queenstown has all kinds of different adventures, and there's, a, uh, there's also a jet boat in there as well. Some of the things you'll visit on this is Arrowtown, a nice uh, old-world charm town. The Gibson Valley Winery, and you'll go there for lunch. And then, uh, again, it's lunch, dinner, and breakfast, and it's two days and one night. Definitely the tour overland experience on the particular itinerary. If you wanted to really see a little bit of Dunedin and head on over to, to Milford Sound and rejoin the ship there. So you'll debark, you'll get off the solstice in Dunedin, travel all the way to Queenstown, spend one night, and then make your way through the countryside and then the ship will reposition over to uh, Milford Sound and come into the sounds and it'll be there waiting for you as you will tender out to the ship and you'll be the only guest getting back on the ship since you were on that overnight experience. Guest, and then you'll get to sail out of the Milford Sound and you'll see the scenery of the sounds which is the picture on the uh, lower right in on the screen. The last port of call, one of the only places I have not been on the itinerary is, uh, is, is in Tasmania in Hobart. Um, the tour, the couple of, three tours that we have for you recommended, the historic Hobart Port Arthur and Wildlife Tour, where you'll visit the Bonarong Wildlife Sanctuary, which includes uh, possibly seeing koalas, kangaroos, wombats, and of course your native Tasmanian devil, which is seen here on the picture on the bottom right. You'll journey to the Port Arthur historic site, uh, get a glimpse of the convict life in Port Arthur as explorers, uh, explore Australia's most feared convict settlement, its hospital, prison, and guardhouse, uh, and more. Um, lunch will be on your own ex at, a, at your own expense in the area in the local town of Port Arthur in that area. That's a full eight-hour tour. The Oysters and Wine Tour, visit Mount Nelson for a panoramic view of Hobart and then enjoy a spectacular view of Coal River Valley as you sample some local Tasmanian wine. Um, tour a family-owned oyster farm and learn how they become one of the family's uh, leading Pacific oyster suppliers in Australia. In Australia. Uh, that's our second tour in Australia, it's an eight-hour tour. Again, the ship is docked in Hobart. And the last one is the Richmond and Tassie Devil. If you really want to see this guy, it gives you maximum exposure to the Tasmanian Devil where you'll visit the Bonarong Wildlife Sanctuary and see the different koalas and kangaroos and, and Tassie Devils. Uh, visit Richmond, just again steeped in the, in the convict history, uh, hence the, the convict uh, the, settlement that is in Port Arthur down below on the previous tour and in, in particular Richmond is graced with fine Georgian architecture and wonderful galleries and cafes and boutiques and this is a half hour tour and Tammy is there any questions or anything just moving along anything I missed along the way and with some of the things just before I is, is book your tours early um, they, many of them do sell out. So when I say book them early, book them online or on prepaid or on our website if you can. Um, some of them are limited, so we don't want you to be disappointed. Well, I think that um, that was a very nice presentation, Paul, and gives our members uh, a glimpse because we all know that actually going to New Zealand is a dream come true. Um, I've visited, Heidi's been there, you've been there, so 
we can only impart all of our passion here this afternoon with just a flat screen with some pictures, but yeah, you guys are in for such an adventure. Um, is there anybody there that has questions at this time for Paul? We are um, just asking that if you have any questions, just go ahead and post them on the question section of your control panel. And uh, Paul, if you if you don't mind staying on for just a little bit, uh, I don't sure. have any questions right now. So um, I guess that might mean that. Uh, oh, here we go. We have one from Diana. Um, what hours do we have for free time in Queensland on the overnight tour? Okay, so the first night before, at the time of checking into the hotel, it's approximately, it ranges anywhere from, depending how the tour is doing uh, on timing, it could be anywhere from an hour to two hours in Queenstown just in the check-in time. Just once you've checked into the hotel, you have a little bit of time to relax in the early evening before going on the cruise over on the TSS Earnslaw over to the Walter Peak for for dinner. So it's about an hour to two hours of free time after check-in on that first evening. Does that help you? Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else have questions for Paul? Yes, see, Diana said that that was helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. So I know that Joe is on the webinar this afternoon, and Joe, we put that bungee jump offer in there for you on that Queensland overnight. Um, Paul was explaining that it's not only the place where it uh, originated, but it's quite adventurous. So um, some of you might have met Joe on one of your other trips, but uh, he's planning to join you guys in New Zealand. And if there's anybody else who are true, truly adventurous at heart, um, you might want to get on the STI chat and talk to Joe and figure out what he's doing because he really goes for it. Uh, okay, well, uh, if you don't mind staying on for a little bit, Paul, sure. we'll see if there's any more questions. Um, but if you have to drop off, we understand. Uh, thanks to your team for helping us out uh, today to present, and we really appreciate it. Um, I want to just um, round out the short version portion of tonight's webinar by saying that the the shore excursions for a unique sailing like New Zealand and Australia sell out in advance. There was a day when all of us would cruise and we would get on board and make our reservations when we got there. But now with the advent of extreme technology, um, all of the cruise passengers on your particular departure are able to book in advance. What single travel has done is to pre-select the three tours in each destination, because we know that our members want to share the experience together. By no means is this binding for you. The idea is that you have opportunities to do the excursions with other singles. Um, it, Celebrity has a myriad of other options on their site. There are probably a thousand tours that you can take. We just selected the ones that we know our members in the past enjoyed and are probably the most popular uh, things to do while you're on this cruise. So we do encourage you to book early. I am going to show you how to make the reservations on our site a little bit later in the webinar. And um, just a, a story, we have a group right now on the Norway and the Iceland cruise. Um, with Royal Caribbean, and we have done the same offer of short excursions in advance. And a couple of our members sadly waited till they got on board, and there was very little available to nothing. I'm hearing reports from June, who's on board with them. I happen to know that last year that the Zane Gray Hole in the Rock was really popular and sold out first. Um, that Fox 2 Catch also sold out, and the, um, the Queenstown Overnight which we're offering um, to find a, a share for our members. Um, we hope that we can match all of you, but we also have it at a single rate. And so that is a real delight to get deep and inside um, Milford Sound and to, to experience that adventure, I, I would highly recommend it. Um, while I was chatting, there's a couple more questions. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Paul, uh, we have one. Where does the boat dock in Bay of Islands? Yeah, you can hear me okay? Yeah, it docks. Yes. It, um, so it, it anchors in the Bay of Islands, 
and it actually guests will tender to a place called Waitangi Pier. Um, Bay of Islands, just interestingly enough, is, is a three little town location. So if I can sum it up as far as we will tender to Waitangi, and then from Waitangi there's complimentary shuttles that go to a place called Paia, and that's a nice town where there's shops and cafes and restaurants. It's only like less than five minutes away. So tender to Waitangi, the tours leave from Waitangi and head over to Wai, Wai, uh, Hokianga and the Glowworms and all those tours I mentioned. And our, um, our Zane Gray's Hole in the Rock will leave from there as well. And then if you're, if you're not on tour, you can take a complimentary shuttle. So hopefully you're on one of our tours. That would be fantastic. Um, and then there's also from Paia, you can, take, you can pay for a, there's a nominal fee. You can take a, a ferry to a place called um, Russell. Russell is the town away from, it's the third of the, the little towns in that little bay of Bay of Islands. So the Bay of Islands is made up of three little um, cities, Waitangi where you're tending into, and then over to Paia, and then if you want to go over to Russell, uh, again, more restaurants and shops, but that's a short little, maybe less than two minute ferry boat ride. It's a few dollars when you can buy a ticket, a ferry ticket in from Paia. So you tender. Does that help you with uh, Bay of Islands? Yep, I'll watch for a response from that member. And there was one other question that we're going to cover um, in terms of how to book additional tour excursions. Um, at this time, I'm going to show you guys some more fun things about the SPI site and why traveling with Single Travel International is unique and potentially life-changing, which is our goal, our vision. And um, I'm going to show you the chat. If you're not aware, on our website, we have a private member chat for all of the singles that are on this particular cruise. You're always able to log in and see who's booked on a particular um, vacation. But as far as doing some final planning and getting together with your fellow cruisers, um, we reserve that in a private chat area. So there's two ways to get to it. First of all, if you're just signed in, so just next to our phone number here at the top, you would see Welcome Back. In my case, it says Welcome Back Tammy. And so I'm able to look at my, now I have admin tools here. You guys would have um, probably member tools or some other um, label there. But from here, uh, if I click on my profile, I will be able to, um, manage lots of information about myself. Right up here at the top where it says about profile, I can edit my profile, edit my bio, change my picture, make friends, etc. But down below, if you see the three tabs at the bottom of um, my profile, you can see one that says Tammy's chat. So that's one way for you to access the chat for this particular cruise or any of your cruises. The other way, if you come into the site and you just want to go right to the New Zealand chat, I'm going to click on Find Trip. This is particularly useful when you're searching and shopping for new vacations because we list them all in chronological order. So I'm just going to scroll down now to the New Zealand Australia cruise. And here, once I click on this, I'm able to see the member chat. Now I have a little bit of a challenge for you guys. Let me see a hand for anybody from the trip who's already been on the chat because I see that there are nine of you chatting already. And it's quite a good place. And now that Paul's presented, you have some um, good stuff to talk about. And Sergio, or, um, Heidi's going to talk to you a little bit later about themes and more activities. So it, it should be buzzing. But that's why we want to show you where it is. So all you have to do is click on member chat and you have access to everything. So it looks like um, Heidi posted something this afternoon about the theme. And so let's say you wanted to read that first chat post. Okay, we call them posts. You click on it and here is Heidi's message. If you want to respond to this message, you go into this box down here where it says post reply and you type your message to Heidi. Hi, this looks great. I can't wait. I already have a koala costume, and I've been saving up for this trip. And just say hello to Heidi and to the, the rest of your cruisers. 
Um, when you write your message, all you have to do is go back down to the very bottom of the site where it says post reply, click on that, and your message will show up to everybody else who goes into that topic. So now let's go back to the topic list, which I did through the link at the top there. Somebody's asking some questions about visas and flight details, good New Zealand wines. I like that one, Jeff. Down here at the bottom, you'll see that there's actually another page of topic. So don't miss out. Uh, click the number two, and you're able to see some of the other messages that are posted. I want to tell you that the chat is designed for member-to-member -member communication. Um, it is for you to get to know one another and to share your preparation. Um, if you have specific questions that are um, detailed about your reservation or anything other than social conversations, your best, uh, your best method is to send an email to us at the Help Center, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit as well. So I'm going to go back to, um, well, we're on the top. I'm going to go back to page one, I'll show you how to do that. And let's say you want to create your own topic. Let's say you, one of the typical ones that we recommend is how to get from the airport to the hotel and off. So even though we have some information on the site, and I will show you that as well, you want to create a new topic. So you click create new topic, and then you would say share a ride in Auckland as your topic title, let's say. And then you would put your first post in here and then hit post new topic. You only have to hit it one time. It will post um, sometimes depending on how quick your server is. It may not show up right away. I would just recommend refreshing your screen to make sure that your topic posted or any of your messages because sometimes we've noticed that members hit the post uh, multiple times and then they have a couple of extra postings that they're not too happy about. So just hit it one time, refresh your screen, make sure it's there. So I'm going to hit escape because I decided I don't want to post that topic. Um, one of the other things that you're able to do within the chat is send a message. So let's say you wanted to, um, you're in here on the flight details and Jeff is giving his schedule and you think, oh my gosh, I'm getting at the same time as Jeff. Maybe I can share a taxi with him to the hotel. You'll see here that you're able to send a message to Jeffrey directly, privately, and our system is double blind. So your email is never revealed. Jeff's email is never revealed. It comes into your regular email box and when you respond to your message from another member, be sure to click on the big lettering inside the message that says respond, reply here to this message. If you just kind of do an auto reply in your regular email, it won't go to the member, it will come to us. So it's designed to maintain your privacy and we respect that. If you want to make a friend with Jeffrey, all you have to do is click on his name here or let's say there's somebody here under the book section. Maybe you're looking at Diana and you'd like to make friends with her. All you have to do is click on her name, which I'm doing now, and then you would invite Diana to your friends list if you'd like to be friends. And here's the benefit of making friends. Then you have unlimited message. If you send a direct message, we limit to four per day. And the reason Again, it's protecting our members. There's a lot of spammers out there, people who are not interested in traveling. They're interested in other things about you. And so in a way to protect you from that abuse and from um, protect your privacy, um, we limit the messages to four per day. But if you make friends with somebody, you have unlimited messages between them, or you may use the chat. So here's where you would send a message to Diana. You type in your subject, type in your message, and hit send. It'll go into her box, she'll hit reply, and then you will have a message back from her. It'll come into your profile section, which I'm going to show you right now. And when it's in there, you'll see that there'll be a message here. Okay, it'll say you have a message from somebody. I don't have one. I have a friend request from somebody named Sham, and I don't think I'm going to accept it. But that's, that's a little bit how the chat and the friend making 
uh, system works. Now, there's another really important um, section on the website, and I'm going to um, show you how to access it from the uh, trip that you're about to go on, which is New Zealand and Australia. And that's for frequently asked questions. So again, I went to find trips. I got to Australia and New Zealand. You could also get to, the, to this trip from your profile, as you saw earlier. Click on frequently asked questions. And as much detail as we could possibly muster is noted here under frequently asked questions. Um, we know that you have to know what time to be in Auckland or um, particularly about a visa. Uh, may I come in early to Auckland or stay on in Sydney? Here's the information that you would need to know about that and how to make those reservations. Um, how do I get from the airport uh, to the ship or to the hotel in Auckland? There's some very good information here about how to make those reservations. If you're coming in on the cruise day or if you're coming in early, how to get the least expensive transportation to our hotel in Auckland. There were, have been some questions. Of course, you need a passport, regardless of what country you come from. And um, most visitors need a visa into Australia. So here, we hope to kind of dispel any confusion. I did update this today. If you are booked on our Sydney package after the cruise, so you're doing three nights in Sydney with Singles Travel International, your visa is included. All we need from you is a color copy of your passport. And if you look at the frequently asked questions um, entry here, you'll see that there's a hot link. You click on that hot link, and it's just like any other program for uploading. You'll, you'll hit upload and find the copy of your passport on your desktop somewhere and load it up to us, and it goes into a confidential folder, which we use to issue your visas. The only thing that we would need to know in addition is if you are a dual citizen. Sometimes people have a US and then an Irish passport. We do need to know that. So um, if, you're, if you are um, not Can you hear me? It's Paul. Looks like we lost yes, Pam. Yes, I can hear you, Paul. This is Heidi. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, looks like we lost Heidi then, correct? Pardon me, everybody. I was yeah, disconnected. Go. Good, good. Uh, You're back. I'm, not quite, I'm hey. not quite sure where I left off. Was it um, at the beginning of the visa explanation, or did that get completed? Can somebody help me out with that? You were at the point of where in FAQ you could upload your color copy of your passport. Perfect. Thanks, Heidi. So that is on the Frequently Asked Questions page, and we just ask you to upload your passport. It goes to a secure folder, and we'll use that to issue your visa. So now let's say you don't have our package in Sydney, but you'd like us to issue the visa for you. We will do that. Go ahead and if you load your passport to that folder, we will issue it for you and charge you 40 US dollars um, because we had included that in our package to Sydney. So that I hope answers the questions about the visa. And I'll open again um, towards the end of the webinar uh, to see if anybody has additional questions. So that's the frequently asked questions page. And let's say you don't have your question answered there. Then we have our help center. At the top of the frequently asked questions section, you are able to see there's a help center button here. But it's always at the top of every page. So whether you click there or click here, I'm going to click right from the frequently asked questions, you'll go directly to the help center. Now, I'm not going to New Zealand, so unfortunately, as I'm logged in, I'm able to see the frequently asked, our general terms, 
um, for Single Travel International. If you're logged in and you're going on the New Zealand and Australia cruise, the frequently asked questions automatically pop up. So let's say you're like, oh, shoot, I need to know something about the airfare. Just log in, hit the Help Center button, and you'll see all the terms and conditions for all of your trips listed in a row. So we try to make it a little easy. If you don't find an answer there and you need something additional, here's where you click on Send an Email up here on the right-hand side under Contact Us. And you click that, and if you're logged in, it gives us the information, who's sending the message, which trip they're on, and helps us expedite our response to you. You type in your question, hit send a message. Our toll-free phone number is here. When you're finished with that, um, and by the way, I, I know that um, oftentimes we're excited and we want to send a, a message to the cone peers. That would be Heidi in this case. Our cone peers team members are always on the road. I know they have the best job ever. So they're not always able to answer questions as promptly as they would like because they're all super conscientious and they love you guys and want to do a good job. But for the quickest answer to those detailed questions about your reservation, please just send them to us at the service or the help center, which is service at singletravelintl.com or the way I just demonstrated to click on the send email. It goes to the same location. That would help us and that would help you. So now that you um, have seen the, the, uh, the frequently asked questions, how to use the chat, how to get help from the site, I mean, we're here, and we want to help you and answer all your questions. And I know sometimes with uh, the three of us on duty, the phones get a little busy, so it might just be easier for you to send an email, and everyone's got different personalities. I've learned that. Um, so use what's comfortable for you, but we are here, and we want to respond to you. When you're all done with help and frequently asked questions, of course, we want you to go back shopping again. <laughs> so click Show All Trips, and you're back to the Find Trips page. The reason I'm bringing you back here now, because we talked about the source versions with celebrities. Normally, you would book those on the celebrity website. But for our group, excursions, the ones that we have pre-selected that we're recommending to you so that you have a group experience with other singles will be booked on our website. So everybody is able to see right now the New Zealand and Australia cruise on my, uh, on my page. All you have to do is get to this point and click book now. Once you click book now, I do hear somebody's typing. I'm sorry about that. If it's one of my team members, could you just mute your phone for a minute while um, we're discussing the, the booking of the shore excursion? So we're able to click book now, and sometimes we get the question, oh, I don't know where to find it because I already booked the cruise. Yes, what's going to come up first is the accommodation page. Once we pass the accommodation page, which you'll scroll down and hit continue, Here's where you see the options, and everybody is now able to see option tab number two. So just go to Find Trip, click Book Now, click Continue, and then scroll down, and here's your options. Here's where you would add the three-day package in Auckland, four-day package in Sydney, transportation, and here are all the excursions that Paul went through with us today. And so all you have to do is click the radio button here. Here's Lord of the Rings. Here's the Transalpine, the Fox 2. And then I go all the way down. There's lots and lots and lots of them. Maybe you want to do the bridge climb with us in Sydney. And then hit continue. My screen says next step, but yours will say continue. And that's where you check out. And that's just like your regular booking. So that's how you're going to go ahead and book the, uh, the excursions with STI. So those are the group excursions. At this time, what I'm going to do is take everybody now from the STI site over to the CelebrityCruises.com website. We are going to give this information to you in your final vacation details document, which comes out 14 days before departure. So you all will be able to log on to the Frequently Asked Questions page of our site, and the very first question 
gets converted and it will have a link so that you can download it. We also put it on the chat and we send everybody a message um, via email so everybody knows it's ready. And once you get that document, all of the details will be laid out for you once again, who booked what to work schedule, who's coming in early, who has transfers, all of those details. But in the meantime, as well as how to go ahead and check in on the Celebrity website. But for today, I'm going to do a quick overview. You would go to CelebrityCruises.com, and then when you book a vacation with us, as soon as you get your um, all your ducks in a row, you've spoken to Robin, you have your airfare book, you've, you've added insurance and so on, she sends you an invoice. And it looks like this. I'm pulling that up right now. And that is where you would find, let me bump this down a little bit, it's quite large. When you get your invoice from us, you will have a section called Cruise Reservation, and right under that, what's helpful to see that is there's a cruise ship there. So you'll see the icon of the cruise ship. Right under Cruise Reservation on the right-hand side, there's your confirmation number. So now this is an old confirmation number for me, but that's where you'll find your confirmation number. It wouldn't be the 26-character confirmation that you get from us when you get your first automatic confirmation. It's actually the one that comes from the cruise line. So you would take that number, come to the celebrity website, and for celebrity, you're going to go right at the top here. You'll see plan, under the logo, plan a cruise, destination, onboard experience. We're going to click already booked because you are. And then we're going to click online check-in. So I'm going to use Heidi as an example. And I'm going to type in her reservation number, her name. You're going to put in the name of your ship, which is the Celebrity Solstice. And you're departing on the 14th of November. We'll be here before you know it, 2015, and click Continue. This will get you into your online check-in. It probably takes about 15 minutes. So you will need your reservation number from our invoice. You will need your passport. And I do believe you'll need your flight information if you have transfers with us. Um, you would know that. And um, they may ask you uh, if you're using transfers or if you're just doing transportation on your own. If you're not sure, just use one of the um, responses that doesn't require any more information. That's easy to do. Once you finish your check-in, I won't do the whole thing here, just, you know, click continue, follow the prompt. If you have any trouble whatsoever, you see here down here um, on the right-hand side, it says for help, call 877-200-2897. They will be more than happy to assist you. Um, once you finish with the online check-in, you will be able to order luggage tags. You'll see here that it must be done 49 days or more before you sail. And by the way, the check-in process must be done at least four days before departure. Is it mandatory? Absolutely not. There are some people out there who still don't have a computer, but it is an extra step that some of the members like to take, so they have that ticket in their hand. Um, but if you do not do the online check-in in advance, you will not be denied boarding. All you really need is your, um, your passport and your cabin number because you would have to have your bags tagged at the pier, and all of the baggage handlers at the pier have tags, and they'd be able to tag your luggage on arrival, and uh, you could just follow along with your check-in there. So um, if for some reason you're unable to do this, uh, don't sweat it. It's just um, a suggestion. Now, after you've done your check-in, this is another area of the site, and if everybody's able to see, right under the Celebrity Cruises logo here on the top left, there's a link that says My Reservation. So I'm in online check-in. I'm now going to go to My Reservation. Here is a summary of Heidi's cruise, and you would find the same information for your cruise. It's got the departure date, the cabin number. She's in the traditional dining at 8.30 p.m., and um, here is the itinerary. And there were some questions about um, other amenities. So here is where you would book optional um, spa treatments. 
or if you want to add a drink package to your cruise experience, if you want to add an internet package. And here is where you would also book additional excursions. So all of this is done here on this site. If you booked transfers with us and you've already um, requested that from Singles Travel International, don't worry if you don't see them yet because we do all of the final transfers about 30 days before we go. We actually ask everybody to send us their flight information and it does take us several rounds of that, including some threatening emails to get everybody's information in. And so by the 30 day mark, if you have transfers, uh, you would be able to see those in there. So we're talking about some options for you. Uh, there are other excursions, as I mentioned. Do some shopping. See if there's anything else that uh, tickles your fancy and go ahead and make those reservations, knowing that with the group, you're with all singles. If you go off into one of the other excursions, you're with the general population which will be, you know, lots of couples and could be families and things, and it's not a bad thing. Um, just be mindful of that, um, and you'll be independently booking those. But if it's something that you can't live without, if I go to New Zealand, I would not be happy if I left without doing X, then you absolutely have to book it. The other tip that I would suggest is don't overbook yourself. Um, give yourself some breathing time. It is a vacation. It's supposed to be a vacation. Now we talked about um, there is some specialty dining aboard this vessel. The Solstice has uh, three specialty dining uh, options. Heidi will do a uh, sign up at the welcome aboard meeting and uh, those will be based on um, your choices. It's, and, and we do it that way because if you try to do it online in advance, there's no way to know who else would go at your time slot. We kind of massage it a lot of different ways. And if we do book those in advance, everybody has to pay in full. And so we know our singles like to change their mind once they get on board. So we will reserve that um, at the welcome meeting. But if you want to look on here and see what's available, you're welcome to do that. And to know that each and every night, Heidi will be hosting dinner at 8.30 for the group in the main dining room. And she will have a section for our group that's VIP and special. So you'll always know where to find her. Um, the seating is round robin. So there are 30 members traveling with us on this cruise. So we, uh, we'll probably have three tables of, um, four tables of eight, close to eight. We'll probably have a few more before we go. This is the prime time for more singles to get on board. and. Uh, She'll be hosting that dinner each night, so you'll know where to find her. And she will do a daily program for you each day while you're on board the cruise. Um, so you're never wondering where to connect with other singles. Even though it's a big ship and there's lots to do, and boy, we pack it in, but there's always um, a way to connect with us. And Heidi is a professional uh, director. She's got lots of experience and really cares about our guests. So with with that said, I'm actually going to um, introduce Heidi. I'm actually going to feature her profile here while she's talking. And um, Heidi, are you there? I am. Great. Can you hear me well? Um, yes, I can hear you fine. And uh, I'm going to give you the, the stage right now, Heidi. All right. Well, uh, good day, Mimei. Uh, I'm calling today or joining you from the island of Kauai. So I will see you guys on the other side of the world in Auckland, um, which is a very long flight for most of us. And so I wanted to just remind you guys, um, take it easy, hydrate, walk around on the plane, um, bring an eye mask, get as much sleep as you can, and then bring a couple books to make that 24 hours fly by. Um, I wanted to also pick back on, on some of Paul's information. As I did this trip last year, I wanted to tell you those that I took, experienced firsthand, which I absolutely loved, and those that I did not have the opportunity because they sold out, to give you kind of an idea as to where the popular um, tours are. Um, first, uh, where we tender at the Bay of Islands, I would highly recommend Zane's Gray Hole. I took this, um, it's a motored catamaran, 
and I saw not only dolphins, but orca whales. And it is absolutely amazing the marine life that you're going to see in the Bay of Isles Islands um, area. And it's actually a scenery that I say flirts with you. It looks like it's Caribbean aqua blue water, but it's certainly not that warm. Um, you'll see flocks of sheep peppering the hills. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, if that's something that's to your fancy, I would sign up for Zane's Gray Hole. Um, I also very much enjoyed the port of Akaroa, which is a substitution port for Christchurch, but I also think that this is almost an improvement um, as it is a small, quaint village, and there I took the fox catch um, sailing tour and then took the opportunity to walk around and enjoy a wonderful lunch or uh, appetizers in the afternoon. Paul said that he had not stopped in Hobart, and Hobart was actually one of my favorite ports. And Hobart is a governmental center as well as university town, so you're going to find plenty of entertainment, great restaurants, everything is very friendly as we uh, pull right in the port and everything is walkable. The excursion that I enjoyed was doing the Richmond Tazzy Devil because I wanted to as soon as I stepped foot on Australia, see a Tasmanian devil as well as see a koala and kangaroos. And you get to do all of that up close and personal. And you're able to touch kangaroos. You're able to touch with, um, I guess, they're like rangers, um, koalas, but you are not able to touch the Tasmanian devils um, because they are uh, very um, moody devils. Um, the excursions that we had people um, on waiting lists for and that sold out, one was in Wellington. It was the Seacoast Safari four-wheel drive. So if that's something on your bucket list, don't hesitate. Book it early. As well as um, the opportunity that I missed was the thermal jet boat in uh, Hell's Gate. And I think that's in Taronga. Um, we touched only brief, briefly on pre and post trips. I know that we're going at a time where it's the holidays and we happen to be in Sydney on Thanksgiving. And I had the opportunity to go on the Captain Cook excursion. It's a boat ride at night around Sydney's Harbor. And when we're in Sydney, this is actually gonna be on Thanksgiving. So um, my top picks, in Sydney would be that boat ride as well as the bridge climb in the New Zealand component of the trip, the Bay of Islands, Zanes Gray, Akaroa Fox Catch, as well as in Hobart, the Tasmanian Devils and Richmond. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information uh, from firsthand um, knowledge. I am an adventurer. I love getting out in nature and doing things in different ways to see it from different perspectives. And I think by doing a combination of both water and land and doing something that gets you out of your comfort zone is why we're going to New Zealand and Australia. Um, Tammy, did you have anything to add to those excursions or anything that I said up to this point? No, I think that thank you for actually covering the um, the topic of Thanksgiving in Sydney, and uh, and and actually Heidi, uh, because she had done this cruise before, she's got this firsthand knowledge. Heidi, maybe you'd be able to help me with some of the additional questions that came in. Um, one okay. of the questions uh, posed this evening was, while we're in port, um, is it? Are we able to spend U.S. dollars, or do we have to use Aussie dollars and New Zealand dollars? When you're in port, you're going to be doing transactions in local currency unless you're using a credit card. So um, what I always suggest is having some local currency on you for um, meals, souvenir spending at small shops that may not have credit card processors, and um, while you're on ship, you'll be able to have everything expensed to your credit card on file, but it's always wise to have local money with you. 
Now we are going to be doing two different countries, New Zealand and Australia. Um, both locations in the ports, it's fairly easy to find ATMs. One of the things that I always suggest is um, before going on any trip internationally, call your credit cards and, and your banks to notify them that you're going to be traveling abroad and to which countries and for what time period so that they are aware as well as do the same with your cell phone so that you have uh, you know, a reasonable package so that you could send texts or very short calls home. Um, so when we are in New Zealand, the first thing that I typically do is stop at an ATM, either in the airport or close to our hotel, to grab about $100 is what I feel comfortable with. Um, and then also do the same when you are getting into Hobart. So when we do our first Australian part. Um, Heidi, another uh, question from Michelle was, what was what was the second excursion that you recommended? Uh, the second was in Akaroa. It's the tender port that is substituted for Christchurch since the earthquake there. And it actually is a beautiful bay, a small quaint town where um, the solstice is anchored out, and then you tender in to actually a small marina and the excursion is called the Fox 2 Catch. It's a catch sailing ship, and it's about, I would say, maybe a two-hour in length excursion. And it's not going to be a large ship. I want to say we were maybe 30, 30 to 40 guests on. And they offer uh, tea, other beverages while you're there, and taking in the beautiful sights. Great, hi, thanks. And so that's kind of something that they could do and enjoy. That might be one of the days that they get a little bit of a break, right? Do the two-hour cruise and then maybe relax for the rest of the day. Absolutely. And Akaroa is walking friendly. Once you tender off the ship, there's quite a few bayside restaurants as well as shopping and convenience stores. So if you don't want to go into Christchurch and do perhaps a lengthier excursion, I would definitely take the Fox 2 catch. And if you say that this is going to be my day with no excursion, you can walk around town. Um, it was very pleasant for both myself and my other uh, friend here, Concierge Elsa, last year. Heidi, I'm not sure if Paul is still with us, but um, would you I say am. that? Oh, hi, Paul. Um, one question that we receive is often is um, if I if I were to just w explore on my own, um, how easy or not easy would that be for somebody if they're not taking short? I know there are ports in the world. For example, I, I'm familiar with Rome. If you get off in Rome, there's nothing there. How about these ports on the itinerary in New Zealand? Wellington, the capital, very easy. So if you were to do, let's say, the Lord of the Rings tour, since that's a short half-day tour, and then afterwards you'd be brought back to the terminal, you can always head back in by a shuttle, and the town's relatively close by, and the town's easy to get by. Not, get around. There's all kinds of restaurants and stuff. So Wellington's relatively easy. Uh, Dunedin, that we offer a shuttle. So that's a shuttle. Well, Heidi was mentioning Akaroa. It's right there, the tender. The little town of Akaroa is right there, quaint little area, nice for walking around, enjoy the, the sights and the restaurants and the cafes and everything and the shops, right there. Bay of Islands, again, rel there's nothing at the Waitangi area except from a Maori kind of a museum location, but the complimentary shuttles will take you over to Paia, which I was mentioning earlier. That one's easy to get around, and the shuttles will take you back and forth. After maybe, let's say, the Zane Gray's Hole in the Rock cruise, you come back to Waitangi and then take a shuttle over to Paia. Easy to get around. Uh, what's one I didn't talk about? Tauranga is relatively close to the Tauranga area, which it's not near Rotorua where all our cool tours go, that's for sure. It's, that's a couple hours away, and that's why those tours are full-day tours, most of them. But Tauranga is an easy place to get around. You walk over to Tauranga. It's a small little town, again, like, like Akaroa. Did I miss one? I may have. Done even? No, I think I got them all. And Hobart, like I said, Hobart. Heidi knew, Hobart knows. She knows more about Hobart than I. It's one place I haven't been. Perfect, perfect, guys. Thank you very much. Um, 
let's see. I have a question. I've heard that in New Zealand, I think Heidi may be best to answer this, that in New Zealand and Australia, that when taking a taxi, you sit in the front seat instead of the back. <laughs> well, I guess I took a couple taxis and neither of them did I sit in the front. But um, I guess it could be a possibility. Um, yeah, I'll say whatever you're comfortable with on that one. I, I, I've done both. Majority I'm in the back, but if if like I'm, I'm single as well, and so, yeah, I've traveled in and around the world and stuff like that. I sometimes get in the front, but I normally in taxis, I get in the back, so that's like a general rule of thumb for me. But that's Heidi, Tammy, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I was just going to say, this is the fun part about travel. You're going to get to find out, and after your trip, you'll know the answers to all the questions. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. I, I, um, we've addressed all the questions. If there are some more, please go ahead and post them. I'm just going to do a little bit of a recap um, to give you a sense of the things that you want to do to prepare for the cruise. And number one would be to add Auckland and Sydney packages. We have um, more than half of the group is coming in early, uh, staying on in Sydney, and. Um, we found that uh, from the surveys that the members that uh, have come in early um, enjoyed that because they were able to get started meeting one another uh, right before the cruise. And um, of course, Heidi will receive you with open arms on the cruise sailing day, but some people who might be a little bit shy or not as outgoing would definitely do well by doing the package, coming in early and getting a head start. Not to mention, you get to see Auckland, and then we have a really cool tour um, the day of the cruise that takes you out into the outskirts. We go to a winery, we have a lunch, and it's a really exciting kite. And uh, so Heidi will be managing that whole uh, three day package. She's been to Auckland. She's an expert. She knows all the good places to eat, all the good places to party. And the same goes for Sydney. So it's like having your own personal app in your pocket. It's called the Heidi app. She knows everything. So it's definitely worth your while to add the packages. And the next thing that I would say to add to your list is to upload your color copy of your passport. It's on the Frequently Asked Questions page. Just click that hot link and load your passport. If you need help, give us a call. We're happy to help you or email us at service, and uh, Janelle will be happy to help you with that. Reserve your shore excursions on the Singles Travel International website. Click on Find Trips, Book Now, Continue, and go ahead and make your bookings. Um, get on the chat and meet your cruise mates. We'd like to see everybody burn that chat up. Let's see here. Let's see what everybody's excited. What are you looking to do? Heidi definitely monitors that when she gets a chance because it gives her an idea of what you guys are looking to do on your cruise vacation. If you need and transfer, I, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, uh, can I jump in there? Today I actually put uh, a post on there just to kind of get you an idea of some of the fun things that we're going to do in addition to all of the excursions, all of the specialty dining, and exploring Auckland and, and Sydney together. Um, it's very typical that Singles Travel International has theme nights. And so you'll see two themes on the uh, chat function so that you can prepare, whether that's getting your creative juices flowing as to what you could dress up as, as well as pack appropriately. And um, could I dive into both of those? Tammy? Yes, we forgot. Okay. Please do. <laughs> so uh, the first one uh, she alluded to, uh, it's a Kiwi versus Koala event. And for some of you, it may be the first time that you're hearing the word Kiwi used this way, but it's a nickname for someone who is from New Zealand. And we wanted to do something that would be interactive, something that we could do a competition. And so we figured that we could perhaps do a bocce tournament or something uh, similar that would be uh, 
for one of our days at sea. And so what we're asking is for you to dress up either as a kiwi or a koala. Now, does that mean dressing up like a fruit and a koala in a koala suit? Not necessarily. Um, it means something that's comfortable and athletic. And in New Zealand, rugby is a big deal. And there's a team called the All Blacks. And if you go online, you can find the All Blacks uh, team as well as their haka dance, which is face painting, wearing all all black, and uh, dancing like the native tribes, the Maori. So you could dress like that. You could wear soccer attire, or perhaps you're a New Zealand sailor. Or if you decided that you'd like to go the Aussie style, style you could easily do a uh, down under surfer, uh, a soccer player, or maybe you're something, uh, someone from the outback. So we're looking for you to dress comfortably, something athletic, so that you could play bocce or perhaps uh, another fun game. So one of the themes is Kiwi versus Koala. And the other one is because part of going to a new place is an adventure. So we're doing an STI adventure down under theme. And the goal is to have everyone express or dress as their favorite adventure. So this is not limited to, but here are some ideas. You could be Amelia Earhart. You could be Indiana Jones. Perhaps Leif Erikson, another explorer, captain adventure. So you can start getting your creative juices flowing with those themes and events. And remember that this is just um, a taste of some of the STI only events that are going to be going on. We will have Breakfast Club daily. We'll have independent meetups. Of course, the excursions that you can sign up for to be with your STI friends as well as happy hours, especially uh, dining, and some after hours dancing or karaoke. Great. Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> you I can't believe we, we almost forgot the fun part. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, so that is a good point to add to your kind of get ready checklist, which is to think about your themes and what kinds of things you might want to bring along. And I know Heidi was consider it to think of things that might not require um, heavy packing, but I, we have to say that in 20 years of, of doing vacations for singles, we've seen some amazing costumes. So um, even though you're traveling a long way, don't hold back. If that's your, if that's your valley look, if you love a theme, go for it. So um, after booking your shore excursions, packing for your themes, um, get on the chat, say hello to your cruise mates, um, if you were, do want us to do transfers for you, let's say you're not coming to Auckland early and you need to be picked up at the airport on the 14th, we need that information by October 16th. You're going to email us at service at singlestravelintl.com with that request. And know that the final vacation details and meetup information document will be on the FAQ 14 days before departure. That's going to be right here in question number one. I'm signed up for the cruise. What else do I need to know? Um, it will be right here. This will be converted to a hot link for that, uh, for that document so that you're able to, to access it and get everything that you need to know. And then, of course, check in on the celebrity website uh, at least four days prior to departure. So I think we covered a lot of information. Thanks for your patience, everybody, because um, we ran over just a little bit. But it, it felt very informative to me, and I appreciate uh, the time from Paul and his team and Heidi once again. And uh, please use our site. Uh, everything that you need to know is there. And uh, we are, I don't have the final countdown. Does anybody know how many days until New Zealand? Either post it on a question. Heidi, do you know? Well, I am heading out on November 9th. So I am looking at not too long. I'm a three, almost three months. Yeah, so we're about three months away, guys. It'll be here before you know it. We're here for you. We're Singles Travel International, creating life-changing experiences and unique opportunities to meet the world together. Have a great evening. Good night.